Welcome to the Fulfillment Project Podcast, where we, the seekers, unite together to step into our higher selves and highest purpose. I'm your host, Simply Sarah, and I'm glad that we have found each other here today. My aim for this show is to give you some tools and strategies, along with the awareness of emotional intelligence and intuition, as you create a life and business from alignment, creating more joy and fulfillment every single day. Hello, and thank you for inviting me to join you on your day, whatever it is that you're doing right now. I'm excited to have you here on the Fulfillment Project podcast. I have a guest for us today. We have Caitlin Kresner, and we have a really great conversation that I haven't had with you here on the podcast before, which is all around body image and our ability to show up authentically and create confidence within ourselves. We talk about body image from all spectrums of being overweight or not feeling fit or skinny enough, and even feeling like we need to be perfect in the world of social media, where all we see is people's highlight reels and thinking that, you know, we need to be perfect. I'm going to introduce you to Caitlin in just a minute, but before I do, I want to remind you that pre-sales are open for my upcoming book, Follow the Joy the book on aligned manifestation. We're getting so, so close. Pre-sale orders will be shipped out on November 21st. And if you order on pre-sale, not only am I going to give you a discount on pricing, but I'm also going to include a full course that will help you dive deeper into your own work of following the joy. You're going to be getting additional teachings and additional resources that go far beyond the book. And so if you are looking to take back your authentic power and transform your life from the inside out, this is the book for you. You can go to uh, followthejoybook.com and pre-order right now, or you can grab the link in my show notes. If you want a free copy of my book, I am hosting a live event called Simply Aligned. It's coming up Friday, November 18th. And with your ticket ticket purchase, I'm going to be giving you a free copy of Follow the Joy. And you will be getting it into your hands before any of the pre-sale shipping is done. Uh, So you get your hands on it before anybody else. And I'm going to be doing a book reading. And there's also a book signing as well. Simply Aligned will be held in Burlington, Ontario. And I've designed this event to be like a seminar slash day retreat where you're going to be hearing from some insightful speakers and we're also going to be doing some breath work diving into two different types really working on our nervous system regulation along with a sound bowl healing ceremony so it's going to be a beautiful day of many different dynamics to help you on your alignment journey and diving into the work right there on that day with all of us So hope to see you there. Uh, The link to buy the tickets can also be found in the show notes, or you can go to simplysarah.com forward slash aligned. Okay, so let's get into my conversation with Caitlin. Caitlin spent most of her life doubting herself and associating her appearance with her self-worth and comparing herself to others. Sound familiar? Uh, And after experiencing excessive weight gain by the age of 29, Caitlin found that she finally was able to take accountability and change her thinking. She lost 100 pounds, which I find so inspiring. And she did this by transforming her mindset and learning how to detach her appearance from her self-worth. She has now made it a mission to help other women do just the same. Caitlin is an international best-selling author, she's a public speaker, and she's also the founder of Master Your Body Mindset Coaching. All right, let's dive into this conversation. Caitlin, hello. Welcome to the Fulfillment Project podcast. Hi, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so grateful to be here and speak with you today. Yes, I feel like we have a really unique conversation that I've actually never had on the podcast all around body image and how that can impact confidence, it can impact our ability to want to step up and do the things that we want to do and, and block us. Um, mm-hmm. And I know for myself, someone who's never gained a lot of weight can see it from the opposite end of the spectrum with perfectionism and not feeling like my body is good enough. And so I am sure every woman listening here can relate to our conversation on some level or another. 
Absolutely. And this is such an important time, I think, to be having this conversation because appearance and perfectionism, they have been huge and women have been the victims of these issues in society for years. But now we're kind of entering a phase where women have protested this, right? And we're starting to see a bit more diversity in advertising and modeling and fashion in these different areas, but it's still not enough. And I don't think people understand enough of how held back women are when they don't have the confidence when they don't have the self-worth because all they think about is them not leveling up to this idea of perfectionism and I think for professional women um, it's a very important conversation to have because you need to have that confidence and acceptance of yourself to move ahead in your career and feel like a powerhouse female you know yes 100 um, percent and I've even looked back over the years of um, and I know we'll get into beliefs as we go along, but what is ideal for the female body based on marketing and, and societal trends? And I remember growing up, it was, you know, super lean, super small. And then as we got into past like 2010, it was more curvy women's and big bottoms were accepted, but having, but growing up and having a societal condition of like, skinny mini like really tiny delicate women and then coming into a new trend and so I think it's interesting where our beliefs can lie and then the societal trends that shift and even as they shift sometimes we can't shift with them based on how rooted our beliefs are absolutely 100% you're very right there and that's something I like to talk about um, with women as well because things do change we look at the 20s 30s 40s 50s and where I come in I was born in the 80s where it was that pencil thin body right everyone was super slim you didn't have the booty or promote having curves and a waist and hips until later in the 2000s and so growing up in the 80s I still believe that ideal it's impressed in my mind that pencil thin is the way to be. Um, and that's where my struggle was. And that's why I'm a body image coach now, because I actually grew up plus size and I didn't fit in um, with what was the perfect appearance of the time. And so that really carried with me throughout my childhood, my adolescence and up into adulthood. Um, I had a very hard time accepting myself and fitting in because I didn't know where I fit in. You know, kids made fun of me. I was, I was the fat kid. Um, I had braces. I had crooked teeth. I had red hair. Red hair wasn't common back then. So for all of that, I was made fun of. And it really made me turn with them because there was no one in the media and society that looked like me, right? There was no one to represent this plus size girl who had the braces and the, the glasses and the crooked teeth and the standout hair. So it really affected me. And I spent a lot of my life giving up on my goals and what I wanted to achieve because I didn't think I could because nobody that looked like me had achieved anything from what I could see anyway. And that stuck with me. So what was the turning point for you? I know you had a dramatic weight loss journey, but what was the moment if you can yeah. pin it down of like, I need to work on my self-worth or I need to really focus on my self-image or start, you know, loving myself or accepting myself? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when I had turned inward, um, it, it really led me to using food as a coping mechanism. Um, so, you know, you need food all the time to be happy, but when you eat, it's, it, it happens quickly. So all you do is continue eating, right? So I dramatically and quickly gained all this weight. And so I was finally 29 years old. I weighed over 250 pounds. I was a size 2X, but my 2X clothing was getting too tight on me. So I was encroaching on a size 3X. And I was always a fan of the show. I'm sure you've heard of it, My 600 Pound Life on TFD. And I would watch this show frequently, um, pretty much every week that it aired a new episode, but I would sit there with my snacks. I'd be sitting in bed with my bag of chips, my cookies, my candy, all of it, watching the show, kind of feeling good about myself because I didn't weigh 600 pounds. Um, but one day I was actually watching the show and it just, it was almost like a faith moment when God spoke to me. And I, that time I had two options. My first option was I'm going to die because of the way I'm treating myself and I don't want to die. Or the other option is I'm not going to be watching this show. I'm going to be featured on this show. Like I'm just gaining weight so rapidly. And I just had this epiphany moment where it was like, I'm not okay with either of those options. And so that's what had me start turning within and looking at, instead of blaming what was happening around me in society what could I work on inside myself to believe in myself to make sure 
option one or two did not happen to me. And that's really what started it all and brought me to where I am today. Yeah. And I can imagine, you know, that amount of weight to lose, how much of a mountain that feels like to climb. It felt like a battle for sure. I felt like I was always going to be sitting at the bottom of the mountain. I didn't even know the first step to take. I just knew I had to take a step. And the first thing I did was actually reach out to um, uh, a counselor at a, one of our local counseling places because I had coverage through work. And it was through talking with them that I learned one step at a time, you know, don't see, don't go from your starting point to your end point, because that's how you get overwhelmed. But it's how I learned to set little goals for myself and take the stepping stones and one thing at a time. And from there, I ended up creating a vision board for myself. Where am I now? Where do I want to be? And what are the small little steps that I can take every day, every week, every month to get from here to there? Um, so it wasn't a mountain. And then when you break it down and you start seeing the small results and you get proud of yourself for every step that you take getting from the bottom to the top, you're just inspired to keep going. You just motivate yourself. You know, if I can do this, like, for example, um, I used to have really bad back pain and platter's fasciitis. I never know how to pronounce that. I hope I said it right in my feet. Um, so it was hard to be mobile, but I refused to let that be an excuse every, anymore. So I started by leaving my house and literally walking around the block and then walking with jogging for five seconds up to 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and just to take those extra five, 10 seconds every day and literally go an extra few steps. Before I knew it, I was actually running on a treadmill half hour, 45 minutes. And so every few steps I took, I just felt better and better about myself. And before I knew it, the back pain went away, the feet pain went away. So baby steps and believing in yourself is really how you get through the excuses and thinking that you can't because your mind changes everything and it opens so many opportunities. I know a lot of your work is around mindset to, to change that mindset. Yeah. Why? And I know you, you really saw this as a long-term journey and you took your time. Did you fall into fad diets or wanting those quick results? Or was that something that turned you off completely? Cause I know no. so many people they're like, I want it. When you want it, you want it now. You want it now. You want it now. That's with any goal, right? Like I want the big successful business. now I want the body. Now I want yeah. all of this yesterday. Yeah, basically. And that's how, you know what, that's how the diet industry succeeds because for they sure. know it's a now situation for many people. And that's why people are drawn into the magic elixirs, the pills, the, um, the medical treatments, all of it. Um, but to answer your question directly, before I had gone on this long-term journey of internal transformation, um, back in high school, right, when you're really, really insecure and you really want to fit in, and again, being an introvert, I didn't quite know where I belonged, I had looked at um, specifically, oh, what was it called? Um, it was a weight loss pill, the name slipping by me right now, but I did look into the magic pills and that didn't work for me. I looked into cleanses and that didn't work for me. And so when I finally hit this epiphany, when I was 29 years old, I reflected on how those immediate solutions did not work for me. Um, and that's when I kind of clued in that if I don't change what's in here, nothing that's out there on the market is going to work for me. And that's the part that people miss. And that's where the diet industry succeeds is because they don't tell you that if you don't let go of the beliefs in here that are holding you back from long-term success, nothing you do for an immediate result is actually ever going to work for you. So that's why I chose to take the natural long-term journey. I didn't do any cleanses. I never did a fad diet. Um, and that's something to this day I still don't participate in. I believe in whole foods. I don't believe in eliminating anything. I believe when it comes to workouts, I don't, I never did any of the trendy workouts um, or felt like I had to do a specific workout. It's a matter of listening to yourself and finding what works for you. And again, baby step it. Like I never thought I would be a girl who like hit workouts. It turns out I love strength training and it's because I took the time to try it. I never thought I'd play tennis. I enjoy playing tennis. So do the natural things, but do it step by step by listening to yourself and finding what you like and what works for you. You really have to just tune out 
all of the promises and all of the fads and the trends. And, you know, when people are telling you, I've tried this diet, I've tried that diet. You don't actually have to diet. You just have to learn to incorporate the healthy foods into your diet and make that a long lifestyle change for yourself. Yes. I think that goes for anything. Like you have to enjoy it. You have to make it. And anything we try for the first time, since it's new, it might feel kind of awkward. It's going to feel different. The brain, brain isn't used to that. The ego doesn't like change. But if we can't form something that becomes so automatic to us that we don't necessarily have to think about it as a big hurdle to do, then it won't ever become a part of our lifestyle. And I see, you know, the gimmicky stuff, whether it's the weight loss industry, whether it's the money industry, whether it's the business industry, marketing gets people by these quick fixes. But in the long run, it doesn't work because the mindset isn't even set up to begin with to look at it from a long term perspective. If you want to stay lean, you need to continue habits to stay lean. If you want to build a successful business, you have to continue the habits to build a successful business. So I think that I I think that's so fascinating that you had that inner awareness really is what it is that self awareness from the beginning to create that success for yourself. Thank you. Thank you. And I love that you commented on um, making it um, a long term lifestyle change because, the, like you say, um, the mind and body, they aren't prepared for something new. And it really is just a matter of experimenting. And when, like, you know, at first you're going through this process, and it takes time, right? Again, the weight coming off your body, it takes time before you see the physical change. But once people started to see it, they started to ask, what are you doing? Like to them, it just happened, right? Because they could see it, but they didn't know for months that it was been three, four months that I started making the changes. Like, how did you do it? What are you doing? And my first comment to them would be experimenting, taking the time. It's never a one and done. And they say in business as well, you can't just go online one day. Oh, no one replied to me. Okay, I'm not going to go send out a DM ever again because it didn't work this one time. So you have to just keep going. And I would give everything a week or two and see what happens. And then if it didn't work, okay, try something else. And if it did work, then you slowly add and you build to it. So I love that you pointed that out because the mind definitely, we have to play with it, right? We It tells us what to do, but we have to get into that subconscious level to be like, no, no, I know there's something more here and retrain it for these new things. Yes. The other factor, and I know, this played into your journey as well, which is body image. Even if you lose the weight or even if you get to the number on the scale that you want or uh, fit into the clothes that you want, if we're not changing the perspective of ourself, that can, so tell me, because I know you went to the other extreme as well on the other end of losing the weight. And then, Yeah. yeah, tell me about that. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I lost the weight. I lost a hundred pounds, but I hit a wall where suddenly that wasn't good enough because I lost the weight. I was in this great place. So I kind of slipped a little bit in my mindset because I'd done it. Right. Um, But then I wanted to tone up a little bit more. So I was going to the gym and I would be looking at these women working out and I wasn't quite at that level. And so I did the opposite. I used to use food as a coping mechanism, but now I was using it as a punishment kind of. So, you know, I, I would have the smallest portion. I was meticulously counting calories. I noticed a thigh gap growing in my legs, which I was excited about. Um, So yeah, the opposite extreme. And I just, um, I suddenly realized that I was doing what I was doing previously when I was plus size, but just in the opposite way. And so when it comes to your mind, it doesn't matter what size you are. And there's this common misconception that body positivity and body image affects plus size women only, right? Everyone thinks like the skinny girl, she has nothing to worry about. She's got the perfect life. But people don't realize that no matter what size you are, what stage you are at your life, where you are on your, the body spectrum, petite plus in between wherever, if you don't believe in yourself that you are good enough, that your body, that you appreciate and accept your body the way it is, it doesn't matter what size you are, you're never going to be happy or satisfied and you're always going to push for something else. So, and that's why you have to stay in the positive mindset and keep reminding yourself the positive qualities about you. So even if you don't focus on your body, focus on your skills and ability. What are the things about you that are great? Keep talking yourself up because who you are at the end of the day, it matters. Your value is based on 
who you are, what you offer the world, your skills, your abilities, what you do, that's what matters, not what your body looks like. And you have to remember that to stay away from one extreme or the other. Yeah, uh, I can definitely attest to that. The uh, co coming from the fitness industry, and I never had any body image issues growing up. Um, I'm lucky to have not grown up in a household where my mom was in diet culture. I didn't see that, didn't have that programming never struggled with my weight growing up, but getting into the fitness industry of a, an extreme body type, which is not maintainable past the stage or most likely past the photo shoots. And just remember, remember feeling like I was never fit enough or I was never lean enough or my abs weren't showing enough. Yep. And it was when I had a photo shoot in 2013 with a prominent photographer hoping to get into some big magazines. And I, I got onto the cover of Women's Health and Fitness magazine, and the magazine cover didn't come out till the year after the photo shoot. And I remember being in the photo shoot, waking up that day, and I was I felt fat. I felt fat. I felt overweight. And I was like, I can't believe I'm doing this photo shoot. Like, my stomach looks all watery and all this stuff I was saying in my mind. And then a year later, when the magazine came out, after I had started on a lot of self-awareness journey, did a lot of internal healing, really moved into holistic health outside of the fitness. And I remember holding that magazine, looking at myself on the cover, looking incredible. Of course, I could give myself the credit afterwards, but yeah. seeing how skewed my mindset was, thinking I was fat on the day of that photo shoot. Yeah. I had abs and my shoulders were chiseled. And it's just, it's phenomenal the way the mind can distort the way you see yourself. And I even, and actually on that topic, I have a cousin, um, she's 19 now, and she is this beautiful, what would be your typical perfect woman in society's eyes, right? Super petite, very thin, blonde. She used to be a cheerleader, um, gorgeous. So you'd think everything's great. She has nothing to worry about, but she actually has a hard time believing in herself and has still a negative mindset. And she actually has a fear of eating in public. She has a hard time going to restaurants. I was at a funeral with her. And, you know, after a funeral, you usually have like luncheons. Um, this was a couple months ago. And this is when I just found out that this was happening. I was asking her why she wasn't having food. And she disclosed to me that she's uncomfortable eating in public because of the way she looks. So I was like, okay, you and I, we're going to have a conversation about this because you're way too young to even be having these thoughts. It was really worrisome for me. Um, but yeah, I won't disclose any more of her story, but just on that thought, that's how easily and how common it is. And commenting on your magazine cover, congratulations, by the way, that must be super exciting for you to have done that. Um, but let's talk about social media, right? Because you were saying in that moment, you saw the cover, oh my God, I'm so fat. And one of the issues right now is social media and how instantaneous that is. And women now who are afraid to go online because they constantly compare themselves with these beautiful women who are on social media, um, taking pictures, you know, a lot of women are in the habit of picking up their phone and looking at that picture and deleting all the ones where they're not at the perfect angle or offering to take the picture because they don't want to see themselves or have others see themselves in the picture. And that's becoming a really big trend that's not okay. We shouldn't be made to feel that way. But what a lot of people forget is the vanity and the falseness behind social media, right? How many minutes and hours are going into setting up that perfect picture, the hair, the makeup, the angle, the lighting, people aren't seeing that you're just seeing the final product. And I can't look like that in five seconds. How dare I take a picture of myself and post it, right? Or if you don't have a following, you assume it's become something's wrong because something's wrong with you physically because you can't compete with that other girl who's perfect and she has a thousand followers or 10,000 followers. So I think that's a huge issue right now that women are trying to cope with as well. Yes, it's this identity wrapped up in the physical image. Yeah. I remember 2017 when I was coming out of the fitness industry, out of a fitness coaching business and into business coaching. And I had this six month period of not knowing how to market myself because I would only market my body. Okay. And, and I would, I would, I'm like, well, do I put a tank top or do I put a sports bra on and talk about business? And it was like all this like confusion because my identity was so wrapped up in my physical image. So okay. let's, let's talk about disassociating our identity from our physical bodies um, because really that's the process of finding our value and finding our worth outside of 
what we physically look like. Yeah, absolutely. And I I have to start by saying it's not a one and done. It's not a simple process. You really have to be willing to put in the time to really reflect. And this can be as going far back to a point in your childhood, um, reflecting on someone that might have made a comment about your body, a body judgment, and maybe that stuck with you. And maybe that's where your beliefs are currently coming from. But there's a lot of steps to letting go. Um, But the biggest thing that you can do for yourself is like I was saying earlier is focus on your skills and abilities. So as a woman, what have you accomplished in your life? What, What are the good things happening for you right now? What do you offer your career, your family, your friends? What do you do for society as a whole? Because all of these positive qualities that you have have absolutely nothing to do with your appearance. Everything that you accomplish from day to day has nothing to do with your appearance. So you can start by simply focusing on these things because that helps build up your mindset and reminds yourself of all the good things that you possess. And if you can start focusing on that with time and with more reflection, um, you start to realize how much you can do that has nothing to do with your appearance. I'm capable of all of these things. And slowly but surely, step by step, your mindset moves further away from having to have the perfect makeup, the perfect hair, the perfect outfit, the perfect appearance every day to get ahead. So it all is internal work and realizing your worth as a woman. Because at the end of the day, let's face it, no one's going to believe in yourself more than you right? And you really have the choice to decide, do I want my life to be about what I look like? Or do I want my life to be about who I am and what I offer this world? And if you can believe in yourself, then sure as heck, other women are going to start to believe in you. And you're going to amp yourself up even more. And that's how you are going to start to thrive. And it's going to have nothing to do with how you look. And you're just going to feel so free. It's just, it's this beautiful, beautiful feeling. Yeah. I like that word free very freeing i know they're back when you're caught in the struggle you really are back a few years ago i wouldn't even show up online if i didn't have makeup on like my hair and makeup's done now because we're recording a podcast but i wouldn't show up on stories and i realized how much energy was going into just maintaining this image and almost i would feel my nervous system just so jacked up because you're trying to portray something that you're not or faking it till you make it. So let's, let's talk about like fake confidence. Oh, fake confidence. (laughs) This is something I sadly know well, and I'm sure others do as well. Um, So I know when I was plus size, plus size, sorry, the biggest way I would showcase this was actually making fun of myself. So I would say things, I would be on the beach and I would be like, Hey, here comes Shamu, everybody move over. Or like, Hey, this little pair of jeans, I can fit that on my leg. And at the time I was married as well. um, And I would make fun of my husband because he was plus size as well. So I would talk about us being a fat couple. And, you know, and and in my mind, saying these things was a way of me kind of as like an icebreaker, because I felt if I was confident in the size of my body and people can see that I didn't care, other people wouldn't judge me and other people wouldn't comment and hurt me, right? So it was really a deflection and a way of um, just pretending that I was okay in my body. And a lot of people get caught up in this fake confidence where they just, they're 100% uncomfortable with themselves. They don't want to seem desperate or depressed or upset or that they don't like themselves. So they'll do things like that. But the ironic thing about faking confidence is that people can see it. And I know when I used to make those jokes, people, instead of laughing, which is the effect that I was going for, people would okay, Caitlin, like calm down. Um, And I'd kind of get the opposite reaction. And that's because people can tell when you aren't being yourself. And I know another issue for me was that in social situations, I would always feel so awkward. I would drink and drinking became a problem for me at one point because I had to have alcohol to feel confident enough to open up, to be my true self, right? Um, And that's another huge issue is people get, uh, if they don't have a coping strategy with them in social situations, they don't know how to express themselves. So they either put on this fake persona that people um, easily see through, or they isolate themselves and refuse to go out entirely. 
So confidence is huge. And in order to be true to yourself, again, it's accepting who you are inside and believing in yourself and not worrying about what you're looking like on the outside, because you draw attention to that. What I learned after is people actually just focus on that and nothing else about you. Right. So yeah, I hope that answers the question a bit. <laughs> yeah. You also uh, tracked what you put out there. Um, because I even saw as I was coming out of my fitness business and going more into holistic health and wanting to help women from a sustainable perspective instead of body transformations, but I was still struggling with the sustainable um, effects myself. And I was showing up talking about sustainable fitness, but I really wasn't incorporating that into my life. And there was so right. much fake confidence. And then I was getting frustrated of why I was attracting all these women who were just obsessed with the scale and obsessed with weighing their food. And so it, who you are is literally who you attract. And as much yeah. as we can't see that, there is that energetic exchange and people will see fake confidence or people will be attracted to you from an energetic perspective and they don't know why. And I, I, cause I, I even see now, if I, if I find clients complaining about the clients that they're attracting I'm like hmm what are you doing in your life what, to exactly. attract that? you have to practice what you preach in this industry very very much you have to be very true to yourself but yeah 100%. Um, what you yeah so the body positive movement it's yes. huge right now and I'd love to just you know get your take on that what you think about it and you know oh, yeah what are your what's your take on the body positive yeah. movement so I actually just released this morning a video on YouTube. It's a training video on body positivity, the facts, the myths, and actually why body positivity and the phrase love your body is not enough. Um, so when it comes to body positivity, it's a great concept, but how many people have actually explained what it is and how many people actually know what it means? Because it's, it's not as simple as looking in a mirror and saying, I love my body, I love who I am, all is well, or for someone to approach you and say, stop obsessing, just love yourself. No one's going to love you if you don't love yourself, let it go. Well, what does that even mean? Especially for a woman who does have body image issues, because she grew up getting comments or was just been insecure in herself, or she's heard body judgments and it's affected her it's traumatizing when you don't understand your own body and why you can't accept your body for someone to say just love yourself so when it comes to body positivity for me it's a matter of supporting people's choices it's a matter of respecting that it, it's okay to still get your hair done it's okay to still wear makeup it's okay to be fashionable but it's okay to be not those things. And being body positive doesn't mean you just stop any and all aesthetics or hygiene or grooming, but it's doing what you want to do for you and making sure you're doing it for you, not to appeal to anybody else, not to improve your appearance in society or to fit in, but you're doing it because it genuinely works for you. Um, so it's those things, it's being respectful of other people's choices. I know speaking with another coach, um, I'm in Ottawa, so I was speaking with a coach here and she recently had a conversation with someone about body positivity and they didn't really know how to define it. Um, but this coach was talking about wanting to lose five or 10 pounds and someone had made a comment to her about, well, no, that's not okay. If you, How can you be happy with yourself if you wanna lose five or 10 pounds? And so being body positive as someone listening is you're supporting someone's choices. And for someone who wants to lose five or 10 pounds, having lost a hundred pounds myself, I know how it physically feels going from one weight to another. And it can seem like a hundred pounds to five to 10 pounds is comparing apples and oranges, but depending on where you're losing or gaining weight on your body, you physically feel the difference. And if you're someone, sorry, who is used to being a specific weight, you're physically going to feel that five pound difference, or maybe your favorite pair of jeans doesn't fit. And it's a simple solution that will add to your energy, add to your positivity, make you feel better, realign you with who you were a month before. And so it's okay to want to lose that five or 10 pounds if you're doing it because you know you're physically going to feel a, a better difference. Um and I had one more great example in my video. This is Lexi, everyone. I apologize. It's just easier to let her do her thing here than try and remove her. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting so distracted. It's okay. Um, my, my cat came through the door earlier. Luckily, I'm close. I can just grab it and open it or else it's like yeah. <laughs> So just at the end of the day, to be body positive, it's a great movement, but we just need to have better identifiers for it. 
because you have to recognize that it is appreciating and accepting your body, but still realizing that you can do things that people say you shouldn't do as long as you're doing them for yourself and not to appeal to anybody else. And body positive doesn't mean that you have to feel obligated to be a specific size. And I'm body positive because I'm this certain size and fit in with the trend right now right that's not the case it's appreciating and accepting yourself um for who and what you are yes yeah i think it'll be interesting and this ties back into really how we started this conversation it'll be interesting the uh the generation that's coming up now my stepdaughter uh, she's 13 um she's her dad is very tall um and she's a very tall and she has you know she's always been very athletic so very thick thighs and she had to go through you know some counseling for some body positivity and you know she's we'll say bigger uh, uh, than all the other girls in her class even from a height perspective um, and it's, I love seeing more and more plus size models, especially in marketing. There's such a diversity with uh, body types coming through. So I think it'll be really interesting in, you know, 10, 20 years of what that belief system is on the kids that are growing up now, as opposed to, I was born in the eighties as well. And, you know, those stick thin models through the nineties that we saw. Um, so it'll be interesting to see that programming that's coming through on the kids now growing up. Yeah. And see, and that's, I'd like to think it would be better, but that it's so hard to say. I don't know if, you know, as much as we can take steps to improve and bring more diversity into um, the media and social culture, um, I don't know how much it will actually change. And you have to think um, the other end of the spectrum as well. If we move into the society where curvy, we'll say curvy women um, are more accepted and that body shape is more accepted, there are also women and I have a friend who is the exact opposite. So she is just naturally tiny. It doesn't matter what she eats, how she works out. She has a very hard time gaining weight. And so she is automatically, biologically, just has this pencil thin body. So now is she going to be ostracized? And are we going to move the opposite way and have these people who are pencil thin? Are they going to start having the feelings that a lot of plus size women like myself had not fitting in and not accepting themselves? Because where do they fit in? Society says you're the right size, but everyone else says you're too small. And if you go too big, then what do you do, right? Where do you go? So it could be the same issue, just reversed. Um, so it's very interesting. And I'm very curious to see where it's all gonna, gonna go. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I feel like I'm on the, I mean, the body positivity movement, I think is fantastic and accepting yeah. and not ostracizing, you know, yeah. but then there's also the topic of health you know, what are, what are we promoting? And, you know, I think all body sizes should be accepted, but also making sure that we're not promoting uh, an unhealthy lifestyle or, you know, d disease that comes from obesity and so forth. And yeah, Absolutely. it's just such a delicate scale with all that. It is. And, and you have to consider biology and genetics a bit as well. And I think those are conversations if you want to make any change or if you're comfortable where you are and don't want to make change, 100%. Obviously, I'm all for that. That's what I do. Um, but you also have to have those conversations with your doctor, right? What is right for me? What can I do? What can I do? What conditions do I have to worry about in the family? I think you have to have some of that responsibility and onus as well, um, no matter what you choose to do. So I don't think it can fully be um, the health industry saying one way or the other, I think you have to personally consider aspects as well. I don't think the industry would be responsible. You know, thank you. Yeah. You have to know what works best and what your genetics is. Yes. Yes. Oh, Caitlin, that's such a great conversation. If there's any women listening here who they're struggling with their body image, whether it's weight or whether it's just feeling like they need to show up perfect or always just be polished, what are some words of advice that you have for them for just like some small, simple steps or something that they can do right away to start shifting that? Yeah. Um, one of the simple activities that I always like to recommend is looking at yourself in the morning. Just look in the mirror, give yourself one to three compliments. Just look yourself in the eyes, say, Caitlin, you're having a great hair day. Caitlin, your eyes are sparkly today. Caitlin, you've got this. Just something to remind you that you are you and you are capable. Um, another activity I like to recommend is for girls who are super into fashion, um, such as myself, and that's 
a whole other can of worms that I could talk about is about fashion. Um, we'll let that go though. Um, is if say you've fallen out of love with your wardrobe because you're having so many bad body image days and you just, I don't want to wear anything, pull one of your favorite outfits out of your closet, whatever it is, put it on without even looking in the mirror. So no appearance whatsoever. And think of a few things. So again, one to three or five things about that outfit that makes you feel good and fierce. Why is this your favorite outfit? Because if you take those positive terms, that's your confidence coming out, right? This is why like, I feel like a boss. I feel like I can conquer the world. I feel like my curves are on point. I feel sexy. You know, this is the best workout outfit, whatever it is. Talk that up because that's your confidence coming out and don't be afraid to wear that outfit out for the day and just see if there's any change in your demeanor and your mindset um, and how you think things throughout the day. Um, having those positive notions in your head before even looking at yourself, it can make a huge, huge difference. Um, otherwise, it's really a matter of diving deeper and you're never going to have a full answer until you look back at the roots of your body image issues where are they coming from why what do we have to let go of otherwise just positive affirmations and just loving yourself boosting yourself up as best as you can yes i i love that you mentioned fashion and like let, let's unpack that a little bit um yeah. before we wrap up the uh because yeah. because i can even attest i noticed when COVID had hit we're all in lockdown and like yeah. you know doesn't matter. Like no one's going to like show up at my house. And I was finding myself not pulling myself together in the morning and how much that affected my energy wanting yes. to even show up online or like go the extra mile in my business. So yeah. Un unpack fashion. All yeah. Yours. Actually. Yeah. When I talk about, I was actually just on a, one of my coaching calls the other day with my group and I was talking about, we were talking about uh, women in power in the workplace. And I even mentioned something as simple as just what you mentioned now working from home. I wake up in the morning, hair is up in a big sloppy bun. I have the sweater on and the, the leggings. And I find that I'm far less productive when I'm dressed like that. So I've made it a point of either straightening my hair and or putting on makeup and or putting on an outfit because I myself feel more motivated and confident putting on something that reflects who I am. So when it comes to fashion, it's a bit of a mixed emotion thing for me because growing up plus size, I loved fashion, but there were no clothes for me. And back in the day, plus size stores had the most awful, awful styles. It was basically like putting on a tent and you felt like you were in a moo, -moo right? Everything was, it was scaled larger, but they didn't actually fit the material like they would for regular size clothes. And so nothing actually fit your body well. Um, but the styles thankfully have changed. Um, and so as I got more confident with myself, not just because I was losing weight, because I was understanding myself more and who Caitlin is, um, I started to dress to reflect who I was inside. And that's what I love about fashion is because despite appearances, you can 100% compile an outfit that is 100% you. Like statement jewelry, right now I'm wearing pink lipstick with the writing I don't know, or the lighting I don't know if you can tell, but like I am a bold, bright person. So to wear pink lipstick, that is a reflection of me. I believe in statement jewelry. I love to dress up. So you can 100% use fashion to be you and don't be afraid of wearing a brand name. If you like brand names, by all means, do it. Don't worry about being judged for it. Don't worry about people, what people are going to think, because if you're wearing something that reflects who you are on the outside, your confidence inside is going to freaking shine and you are just going to take over. So I am 100% a fashion person. It just, it helps mentally align you for success and just showing your true colors. I can go on and on about fashion. Yes, yeah. That's why I oh, said it's a whole thing. <laughs> I can totally attest to that. And even yeah. like through my own identity shifts or even shifts in business, I've caught myself exactly what you said, like go buy a new outfit or go through your closet or throw at anything that, you know, doesn't feel like it resonates with you anymore. Uh, yeah, changing your fashion can really help us step into a different um, persona. There's a, there's a great book by Todd Herman, who's a Canadian. Uh, it's called, oh, Alter Ego Effect. And okay. he, yeah, and he even talks about whether it's glasses that you want to wear or even like something that you have on that helps you step into a more confident version of yourself or that person that you wanted to step into. And so having these anchors uh, can really help us step up in different ways. Yeah, yeah. And don't ever feel that you're not worthy of wearing something. Don't worry about 
Um, if people are going to judge you, I know that's another thing that it's hard to get over that right away. And that's something I work through with clients, but you can't worry about that because that's coming back to appearance and judging yourself and worrying. Don't just be you. And I own an e-commerce fashion boutique um, as well as my coaching business. And my slogan for that boutique is beautiful and unconventional because I believe that every woman has the right to live unequivocally carefree. And I feel like she can do that through her fashion. That's one of the best ways to express yourself. Even if, if you are like, I used to think I was an introvert and don't want to talk, people can get a great sense of who you are. And it's a great way to open up conversation easily. People will talk about your outfit and because you like your outfit, it can be easier for you to start talking positively about yourself in response to this person. So fashion can be a beautiful, beautiful thing if you see it the right way. So great. Thank you so much, Caitlin. I know you have an online community. Um, I know how powerful community is for any shifts that we want to make and getting around like-minded people. And so tell us about your community, where we can find you, where we can creep you. Absolutely. Thank you. I love creepers. You make my day. (laughs) (laughs) There's good creepers out there. Um, Yeah. So my primary community is on Facebook. Please feel free to search for uh, Master Your Body with Coach Caitlin, and I will let you in. There's always inspirational tips, videos, posts. I'm always putting inspiring information just to remind women to keep going, whether or not it even has to do with body image, just how you can love yourself and bring your best self forward to succeed in whatever comes your way in life. Um, There's lots of positive feedback in that group. The women are so supportive. I absolutely love it. That's the best place to find me. If you're an Instagram, um, you can find me on Insta as well at masteryourbody.mindsetcoaching. There's, you'll see a little picture of me, or you can just add me to Facebook as well, Caitlin Kresmer. I love to have new friends. I also believe in community and support. Um, it's a large part of why I am where I am right now. And yeah, I'd be nothing without community. So please, please connect. I would love to hear from you. Yes. Thank you. I'll put links in the show notes as well. So people can awesome. jump up. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Sarah. This has yes. been a wonderful conversation. Absolutely. Yes. Great Thank as you. well. And like what I said at the beginning, you know, I haven't had a, a talk about, you know, body image. And I think from so many different spectrums, women, especially, you know, struggle with this to step up in confidence and believe in themselves. And so I just love the work that you're doing. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me on this episode today. My website, simplysarah.com, is a great place for me to continue to support you on your journey to alignment, joy, and fulfillment. There you will find upcoming retreats that I am hosting, resources, books, and many other helpful tools to help you on your travels through this thing called life.